I, I mean, I was, last season obviously, you know, ended ultimately in disappointment with with not, not getting promoted. But you really have bounced back really well this season. And it's always a hard thing to do in football to bounce back from a from a disappointment. I just want to take you back. Um, I mean, can you describe to me how you felt after that that evening in Wembley? I, I remember the game very well. You, it wasn't the best game for for Brentford that night. Um, how do you overcome a disappointment like that on a personal level? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, I there's not not one specific thing I did uh, in terms of uh, thinking I have a specific behavior or way of thinking. Um, I think it's the way I am that, of course, on the night and the next couple of days is devastating and you don't really want to speak with too many people about it unless it's people that you, you know, I have some really good friends in the, in the football world that also are head coaches, you know, it's easier to speak with them about it or football people that, that really understand it. The rest, friends, family, we don't really want to speak about it. <laughs> it just hurts too much. Um, but after, you know, um, a couple of days you were home in Denmark and you spent time with the family and you try to relax and you try to actually forget it a bit, if that makes sense. Um, and then we had such a short turnaround, which make it easier to just refocus and just put your head down. That's how I'm working. Okay, next time, zoom, just zoom in. And then we are in the moment and we do everything we can to to maximize uh, that potential in this team or that player um, or in that situation. So, so um, I would say that, that that's how I do it. I think it will be a memory that will always be in me like a um, piece of glass that you are a body of soap and uh, it will be there forever. And at a certain point, it will maybe, maybe be uh, what you call it totally... Uh, uh, um, it would be totally gone in the body or um, or the day that you actually achieve something even bigger than maybe you will poof, gone. Uh, yeah. Check. <laughs> we can move on. I mean, I mean, of course, you must have learned a lot from it because, you, you know, you, you, you had that fantastic run to get yourself in that position in the first place. I mean, let's not forget that. It was a staggering run of, of, of matches, wasn't it, that, that you won on the bounce. Then to get so close and not quite get over the line for the automatic... And then to lose that first leg and then to come back from the first leg against uh, Swansea, wasn't it? And then to get into that final, have that second chance and then obviously not manage to get over the line. It was kind of like that. It was like a roller coaster. Um, you must have learned so much from that. And, yeah. that's so and the players, of course. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt that, you know, it's like with everything in life. The first time you are in situations like that, you, you can try to prepare, you can speak to people, you can you know, do everything. But you can't really prepare it before you stand in that situation yourself. So yeah. of course, of course, I've been in 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 situations where it was a really really important match to win. Um, so of course, I had a lot of experience in that. So it was not for, for me the the only way where I felt maybe a tiny bit different was maybe the Stoke game, but not when the game was on. The other game, the Barnsley, no. The two semis finals, no. The playoff final, no. Yeah. Of course, you are tense and, you know, you want to win. So, of course, uh, everyone uh, would, would be like that. Uh, but especially some of the players haven't been in, in that situations, And also as a club, as staff member. So we learned massively. Um, but now it sounds like uh, if we had that experience, we would definitely have won it. No, 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 no. As you said, first and foremost, those seven games or eight games of winning is unbelievable. Because yeah. it was not only eight wins, it was eight well-deserved win every single one of them, which is incredible in this league. Yeah. Um, and uh, then we lose to Stoke, where everybody say that we bottle it. And I will, to my the end of my life, I will say, no, we didn't. Yes, we had someone who learned something. But if you are um, a, a neutral football person and look at it, you will say, okay, Brentford are probably winning or drawing that six, seven out of ten. And if we did that, we would have been absolutely fine. And the Barnsley game, we would have been winning that six out of ten with the chances we had and the situations. Just on yeah. the night, it didn't happen. 
And then it's a coincidence that the Fulham game, we played them now. I played them um, uh, four times. They haven't scored against us in the 90 minutes. Okay. So they decided to do it an extra time with a wonder goal, uh, goal and, 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 and a mistake by David. So <laughs> it's margins in football. It's cruel. Um, but um, I think we need sometimes to understand that we didn't achieve the biggest, biggest result. But the way we played, the way we performed last year, I just have to say, wow. Yeah, it was a successful season, uh, without a doubt. Um, I mean, how do you think the team's progressed this season? Uh, what do you think is the biggest area of improvement? Um, I think, actually, in terms of one thing is standing in that decisive games, but... I think that we need to remember that last year it was a completely new team, completely yeah. new team. Um, so everyone could see it took some games to get going. Um, uh, and also, it that was also margins, but maybe it's something that we learned in the group. I can't really pinpoint is that or that or that. But we lost nine games, one nil. Nine games, one nil. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm. And maybe one or two of them we should have lost. The rest we should have won or drawn. And this year, I think a lot of the games we turned into to tight wins or draws in this uh, unbeaten spell. And that's a combination of David become a tiny bit better. So, for example, you like it black and white, not you, but to, to explain it. Sure. He made a mistake against Millwood last year um, where he got tackled and we lost that game 1-0. So we haven't made that mistake this year. That means that maybe we got a point there, if that makes sense. To, to... So David learned and become a better player from last year to this year. Um, Henrik Delsgaard and Pontus Janssen also got a tiny bit better, even they're very experienced, but at least better to be better leaders in, in specific situations. Ethan Pinnock, top player last year. Yeah. First year in the championship. First year really, you know, performing at this level. Did top, but also learned and got a tiny bit better. Rico Henry, first year in the championship, uh, full season, did amazing, but he actually upped his game this season. Uh, we know we also, uh, then um, Matthias Jensen, first year in championship last year, played in Spain, didn't really play, played in Denmark in a middle team. So last year he played for winning something and achieving something big, uh, did well, but this year I think he's been even better, better decision, better defensively. Justin Silva, also the same, better decision, better defensively. Brian Buemo, he, he hasn't scored as many goals, but he loses the ball less times, you know. Um, and then uh, Sergio Cano's also been growing. So there's a lot of players who just added a little bit value. And on top of that, we lost the two best players in the league offensively, plus Christian Argan, who maybe were our best player. So it, it's, it's actually incredible what we are achieving this moment in time, I must say. And since October, you, you, you know, you haven't, I mean, you've lost, have you, in the league? Uh, you haven't lost the league game. You seem to have that belief that you can't get beat. Uh, that there seems to be that instilled in the team now. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We, we know that because I think from, actually from the, I know we haven't conceded, conceded the fewest goals, actual conceded goals. But if you look at all the stats, we are number one, um, expected goals against. We are conceding the, the fewest expected goals against. Also, in terms of touches in opponent's box and all that. So, it's just show that we actually been a tiny bit unlucky in terms of the goals we can see, um, uh, if you believe in that. Uh, so, we have a massive solidness. We are difficult to play against. And now we are adding a little bit more free throwing football, which I have missed. So, I've never been really, really happy, uh, Justin, I must say. It was well, only this, this, this season. Yeah, we have missed yeah. some free floating football. It was the first half against Watford where I thought, oh, yes, now we have some of what I want. 30 minutes against Reading, yes, a little bit more uh, of that. And then I, th I thought Newcastle, Bournemouth was, was up there as well. And I think we showed some of that against Tottenham um, two days ago as well. So, so we are getting um, where I want to be. But it's not only of adding layer. We think we can, but we need to keep it up in a season where everyone knows that yeah. you accumulate... Uh, the physical load, the mental load. So how can we uh, keep achieving and performing and maybe add another thing that demands unbelievable mentality? And that's what I try to install in the players and the staff. 
Now, now obviously, you, Brian's the only one left from your famous BMW, as, as they called it. Um, how does he feel without his team? team? How do you think he's doing? Um, I mean, he obviously hasn't scored as many goals this season, um, but this game's obviously more than that. Uh, how, 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 do you, how do you think he's adapted? I think um, I think you sometimes need to remind ourselves that he was a, a, a young player. I think he was 19, just turning 20, and now he's 21, I think. Yeah. Um, just moving abroad, coming into a team that you're a month in, just start clicking. And the relationship outside and um, and on the pitch with um, Said Ali and him was remarkable. So he just suddenly needs to find a new relationship with Ivan and, and Sergi and Tariq. Yeah. You know, so so that, you know, um, is something you need to, to think about as well. And then we all know it's very difficult to have a top consistency as a player. How many players, even, you know, wingers, if you can name me three wingers in the Premier League that consistently score 10 to 15 goals per year, I don't think you can name many. Um, so, so of course, we hope for a little bit more goals, but he scored three goals, and I think actually seven or eight assists, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's that's just as many assists as he, as he got last year. So he added more assists, a little fewer goals, been unlucky, I would say in some situations. But where where he is so good for us is that he's now added the the part to get his game where he's losing fewer and fewer balls. So he's really protecting the ball better. He is a top pressing player. Um, he works so hard for the team. So I think it's a matter of time that uh, that he will um, add a few more goals because he's ending in the in the right areas and he's very focused. I mean, obviously, Ivan, a lot's been spoken about Ivan. I mean, obviously, he's been scintillating. I know you're really happy with him. His, his goal stats are remarkable. What, what, what do you think he needs to work on to get even better? I think, I think first, as you said, we've said it before, but I think we... <clears throat> I think the club, uh, for recruiting him, the coaching staff, um, and the players, and Ivan, deserve a lot of praise, but it's not easy just to step into um, a team. That deserve uh, that um, that demand a lot of teamwork. Um, so the way he done that is is unbelievable, and that'd be for the third year in a row. And Tottenham seems to to produce a twenty five uh, goal score in championship is yeah. it's unbelievable actually. I haven't yeah. I don't know if any other clubs have done that uh, before. Of course, he needs to score nine more goals, but I'm pretty confident he will do that. Yeah. Um, so I think his movement. And finishing skill inside the box is top. We still work on that day in, day out. I think his link-up play is really good. I think he got a good eye for his teammates in terms of the little flick, the little set, um, um, the, um, uh, the reverse pass and stuff like that. It's still a bit he, he can still work on. I think his hold-up play in terms of physicality is, is top. Um, yeah. Um, so, so, but the link up play, you know, the final bit can still be better. It's, that, it's still a little bit the finishing. And then I think the pressing game, which has been so much better at, since he started, that's still the, the bit he's working on uh, constantly because everyone loves a striker that work hard and he work very hard. Um, but now he needs to do it uh, consistently. Yeah, I mean, I mean, last season you were saying Oli was a complete striker and you predicted he'd, he'd be playing at the top level. Do, do, do you see that in Ivan? Do, do you see later down the line that there's a chance for him there? Yeah, 100% the same. Um, okay, of course, they um, are, are slightly different. But I think actually in some ways, I think he, I, I think Ivan's, of course, um, heading in the box are better. Um, and I think his positions in the box are at the same, if not better, than, than Oli. Um, uh, but both of them are, are top class uh, players that, that where um, Oli have a little bit more pace and can run a little bit more behind then Ivan can hold it up a little bit more maybe link up a little bit more so so it's small bits that, that, that define uh, the two of them I think both of them have um, Oli already showed in the Premier League I hope that Brian uh, no not Brian Ivan is, uh, is going to play in the future I'm pretty confident that he will um, hopefully with us now, now, VAR, <laughs> it's always been spoken about, but um, after the Spurs game, I was, I was watching it at home. Um, what's your view on the system and the rules that they implement? I mean, the, the, the offside one, for example, I, I mean, I mean, it was like a fraction, wasn't it, his, his knee? Um, I remember, in the rules, actually, it, um, it used to be, and it still says in the rules, if you're level, it, it, it's onside. 
Um, but of course, with VAR, there's no such thing as level, because if you zoom in, there'll always be part of somebody's body ahead of the other. Mm. I, and maybe it's because I haven't read the rules well enough, I don't know which part of the body that needs to be in front or behind before you're safe. And so where is it also your head? I think, I think it's everything, part the arms and the hands, I okay. think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but anyway, I think VAR is um, technology that will continue to be in the game. I don't yeah. think that everyone... No, I don't think even that they got a lot of complaints about it. I don't think it will be changed. So we just need to get used to it. Uh, that That's my uh, way of viewing it. Um, I think just like when we didn't have VAR, where we thought, oh, so, you know, we had that feeling, ah, if it's a half a yard um, of um, offside, then we would say, ah, it's maybe difficult for linesman. If it was a, a yard offside, then, oh, he definitely should have seen it. Now, uh, we will say <laughs> it's uh, 10 centimeters, fair enough. Uh, but if it's five or two, then so mm, I think it's tricky. But it, it, it's, it's, of course, um, it is a blow because it would have been a goal uh, given to us a Tuesday night. Um, yeah. uh, but it's something that we need to take into consideration that it will be there. The only thing I would say, actually, the red card, which was a VAR, Given after yeah. Yeah. that's one where where um, we appealed it. Uh, I think it's a red card, but it can never be a three day ban. It you know they, they need to look into that. So hopefully they look into that. Uh, yeah. Because if yeah. you see, there's that, no intent there at all, is there? No, no intent. intent at all. Uh, I know he caught him, but also if you look at real life, there was no one complaining at all. No, not no. even the um, uh, the Tottenham bench first after they saw the video clip then of course they complained we were the same yeah. um, so um, that's the thing if you use it for a red card they need to really understand the the game that's been played the, the referees which I, I think they do and I hope they do so they can see okay it should only be one day yeah but hopefully maybe there's something they can discuss with the managers and the players in, in the summer maybe there can be some sort of committee or, so, or something, you know, some, some I think sort of... it's important that uh, maybe the head coach managers meet with uh, the referee union, whatever, in VAR and discuss yeah. these things so you can get better understanding of everything uh, and hopefully adjust uh, the bits that could be adjusted. Now, Thomas, what, what would you say has been your biggest achievement so far? I mean, I think you've been at the club four years, isn't it, in total? What would you think has been the biggest achievement? And is there anything that you regret? Um, I, I, mean, I mean, I suppose... You don't regret anything because uh, you learn from, from things. But what's the biggest thing you achieved and, and what would you have done differently if you had it again? Hmm. Good question. Um, I think maybe the biggest thing, and I would say we have achieved, achieved is um, the culture we've been building um, here at Brentford. Because I think the culture is um, is everything. Um, and I think that we have this unique uh, togetherness where you can see it just, it's just aligned uh, from the top to the bottom. And uh, uh, for staff, players, the board, the owner, uh, me, that we're actually good people that work in the same direction. So it's not only the gun, it's also the strategy. That we have this attitude where we believe in ourselves, because I think you need to do that if you work in an elite environment, but also are humble. Uh, because if you're not humble, somebody will, will run past you. Um, we work extremely hard. You don't achieve anything in this world if you don't work extremely hard. Um, and then we try to put a performance in every single day. And that performance is on the training pitch, outside the training pitch. So these four bits, I think, is, is extremely important. And on, on top of that, or under that, or besides that, is our style of play, where we are clear in the way we want to do it. And we've been that for the last four years. So, so I think that that act together and that consistency in that, that over time will just create uh, results. Maybe we don't have the margins with us last year. Hopefully, with this year. But 
But if you keep doing this, then you know, you know, the scoreboard will take care of itself. You, you give yourself a really good chance, absolutely. Um, in terms of the, the virus, by the way, Thomas, is that affecting you or your family in any way and friends? I mean, it's, it's difficult for everyone, I know. I, I've just seen all the horrible news reports in the last couple of days from hospitals and things. It really does humble you, doesn't it? Oh, massively. I think uh, it is an unbelievable, sad situation worldwide with this pandemic. And I don't yeah. invert the, or would say, I don't, um, I admire the world leaders that need to take a decision about this. It's so easy to uh, to complain about it and uh, be disruptive, but it's not easy to take these decisions. Um, I really hope that we're going a little bit more towards the, the light. And I believe we, we do with the vaccines and everything. Uh, but I must say on a personal level, I'm pretty goddamn tired of it. <laughs> I think yeah. we're, all, <laughs> we're all fatigued. Um, we can't see family or friends enough, or we can't. We are social people, so we want to socialize yeah. more, but we can't. That That's tough. Um, but um, human beings are incredible creatures uh, because we adapt. Um, and we take one day at a, at a time and uh, we stay we one step forward every single day so we will get through this but i really really look forward to uh, a normal life i've just got a couple of questions here for some fans uh, that, that, that have sent something to me just, just very brief answers you don't have to give me detailed answers to these uh, what, what do you like doing in your spare time that's not football related um i spent uh, time i would say with uh, a little bit more difficult last eight, ten minutes months, but uh, with my family, my, my three children, uh, my wife, Nana, um, and my friends, I would say that's uh, that's my best interest after um, after football. Um, I try to be better to relax sometimes. I need to free some space in my brain and uh, be a little bit more calm. Uh, so I try to watch some Netflix series and... Uh, and, and, and do a bit of that. Uh, and what do you like watching on Netflix, may I ask you? <laughs> uh, I want to uh, I watch uh, Modern Family, which I oh, love. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, you know, I I laugh and, and I cry a bit. Uh, you know, I'm getting old, so you do that. And uh, uh, Vikings, of course, when you're coming from Denmark, you need to watch that. Oh, uh, right, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, a bit of uh, British culture. So watch, actually, um, uh, Peaky Blinders, uh, watch that as well. Right. So, um, yeah. I've been asked, uh, Christian and Pontus, how, how, how close are they from returning? Any news on that? Uh, Pontus is, uh, that's a minor one. We um, He should be available for selection uh, um, for the Bristol game uh, because that'll be an, that is announced now. So he'll be uh, available for that. Christian and a, a bit further, but he's on track now again. Also asked, uh, would it be a push in the transfer window this month? Is there any plans to strengthen or are you happy with everything that you've got at the moment? I think we have a really strong squad uh, and I'm really pleased with that. Uh, you know that we are a club that are always prepared and always looking to make the good deal, but we haven't planned one position. We need that. Um, so so it, 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 it depends if something... not. It, it, how can you say it? it's not coming up it's something we are in control of and we look at and maybe it turns out okay we go uh but uh no uh not planned so we're just aware i've got two more here would you ever like to manage denmark one day if the chance arrived <laughs> <laughs> i i think i think it's a big thing to manage you uh, be head coach of your own country so of course uh that would be um, a big thing. I'm not saying it's my biggest dream or anything, no. but, but of course, it's uh, that would be big. It, it would be. I, I would admit that. Yeah. And finally, um, I don't know if you've been to one, but have you, have you got a favourite restaurant in Brentford? In Brentford? Maybe I have to go to a restaurant at the moment. If, if not, is there a favourite restaurant that you, that you otherwise like to go to? Oh, no, nah, not in... Uh, We've been, you know, we like to go out. We've done that more in 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 England and London. But there is, is I'm actually not. Uh, I have one where I go to uh, lunch or breakfast with my wife. That is um, Cafe uh, Forty in Barnes. Uh, that's the okay. that's the what you call it the um, local uh, we use. But going out for dinner, we are very open minded and like to try a lot of different restaurants. 
And what, what's your go-to food that you would normally have in, in that cafe? Ah. Uh, what would you normally have? I think I'll treat myself with an X Benedict. Oh, lovely. I love X Benedict. <laughs> You're making me feel hungry. <laughs> I've not had lunch yet. <laughs> Look, Thomas, thanks very much for your time. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, I'll um, see you, no doubt, again very, very soon. Thank you, Justin. Take care.